Hey everyone, this is my first time going live on Facebook and LinkedIn, so I'm giving you a two minute warning for the webinar. We're gonna start in two minutes talking about the SEO success secrets of Toggle, but because I'm live for the first time, I just wanted to check that it's all up and running and that we're good. And so if you're tuning in already, feel free to say hello in the comments. I would love to hear from you. We have someone monitoring the comments and we wanna see where you're at and how you're doing. And just be aware that this is um, our webinar series where we look under the hood of successful software companies and we see how do they do SEO, what are they doing well, and what can we learn from them. And we're gonna kick it off like with the official presentation, like 60 seconds or so. Today, I am calling in from Berlin. I just spent three weeks in beautiful Costa Rica and I'm back to the SEO world, back in my, uh, studio environment at home and looking forward to sharing the insights with you because Toggle is a very interesting example of, um, for SEO because spoiler alert, they're doing content really, really well. And I would love for you to see those examples and learn from them. All right, so let me see. I think we do have apparently nine people on LinkedIn already. This is making me very happy to see. And let me see for Facebook, might need to refresh to see what's happening. Yep. But I can also see, OK, that seems to be working as well. Nice. All right. Um, I see that also StreamYard apparently is giving me some very delight delayed subtitles. So I'll turn them off. Wait. Do you hear it twice? So now I'm hearing myself twice. So let me know in the comments if you're also hearing me uh, twice. Uh, let me see. Ah, there we go. All right, all right. I'm back back to it, understood what was happening. I was hearing myself on LinkedIn with like a 30 seconds delay. Okay, so off we go. It's, it's 4 p.m. in Berlin, which means it's the perfect time to get started and learn some SEO. Um, thank you all for being here today. My name is Viola. I run an SEO company called um, Flow SEO because I'm very passionate about um, the state of flow, which is when we feel in the zone, when everything is just right and we get so many incredible results done. So this is why my company is called Flow SEO. I'm based in Berlin, but I run an international team. We have uh, people in Europe, in the US. We have clients in Europe, in the US. So this is who we are and today, um, this is the second webinar in the series, Decoding the SEO Success Secrets. And the background for this series is that I've been seeing um, uh, people, you know, writing beautiful SEO guides, phenomenal SEO guides, and I really, really love them. Um, but sometimes it can seem so esoteric. It sometimes can seem so hard to understand. And so my idea was that if we break down actual websites and actual SEO strategies, it might be a little bit more tangible. And there might be lots that you can learn from people who are already doing things right. And so um, th this is the goal of the webinar today. And with that, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I have a few slides prepared and um, we're going to go over them now. So let me see. So. Let me know if you can see my slide deck now. Um, it should be like green saying decoding the SEO success secrets. Um, I already talked about myself. Now, what makes Toggle such an interesting um, example for SEO is uh, that it's a company that was founded in 2016. So it's already almost 15 years old, which obviously can, if you're a startup, you're in your first year, your second year, um, that might be a bit intimidating because you could be like, oh, they're 10 years ahead of me. But if you look at their organic traffic charts, you can see they really, really started picking up SEO like early 2017. So they really built a lot of their SEO success in the last four years. And Ahitraf says they have at least 300,000 visitors um, a month from SEO alone. Um, Samrush is a little bit more optimistic. They say they probably have between 400 and 600,000 visitors a month from SEO. Um, but for sure, the traffic value that they're getting is extremely high. So this is an estimate 
what if you wouldn't be getting these clicks for free from SEO? What if you had to pay for all of those clicks on, on Google ads? Then this is the amount of money you would have to spend to make that amount of traffic. And so Toggle has a really strong URL. Their domain rating is 83. They have lots of referring domains and backlinks. They rank for hundred thousands of keywords and all that in a very competitive space because Toggle started off as a time tracking tool, but now they also have like um, a planning component. And so they are not only up again, Clockify, ClickUp and other time tracking tools, they're also up against Asana, Monday, Teamwork. So they're in a really competitive space as well. And still they managed to position themselves very well. And so this, this is, um, we're gonna understand how they did that today. So today we will cover the success secrets of Toggle. We will talk about their in-depth long-form guides. We will talk about keyword mapping. We will talk about meeting search intent. And then as a bonus, we talk about how Toggle is being playful and how maybe you want to be playful as well. Um, if during the presentations, any question come up, please let me know in the chat. We have someone on the chat um, monitoring the questions and I would love to see them. And so uh, feel free to a question away. We'll also do a bit of a Q and A um, in the end, but really, really the chat is there to, to, to place your questions as well. And so with that, we go, we go back into the presentation. So, like I said, if you ha have not known Toggle, Toggle is mainly in the time tracking space. And so I wanted to kick us off by showing some of the things that they got right, which um, I've been looking at the uh, top ranking pages that are related to the word time. And so you can see even their homepage ranks position two for the keyword time tracking with, with more than 3000 searches a month, which is great. But then they're also going after some terms like time card calculator, they're in position 12, but you can see the search volume is massive. Time management tips, they're in position five. Time management strategy, they're in position three. Time tracking apps for the iPhone, position one. Time wasters, position one. Time sheet PDF, position two. So they really managed to be in the top three, top five for time related queries. So everyone who's looking to manage their time better, more masterfully, um, is at one point or another come across Toggle, which I think that is very powerful because even though some of those queries are educational, informational, top of the funnel, it just makes it that Toggle is in the player in the space, time management and time tracking. And what I wanna show you is what they've been doing really well is their long form guides. So one of the first SEO strategies that I wanna present is like how they're leveraging long form guides. And so if we think about time management tips, um, they have this beautiful guide, 32 time management tips to work less and play more, which I'm absolutely on board with. That's my, that's my goal. And so you can see that it's really in depth. It starts with what is time management, um, then explains that um, very well. Then it has like related keywords like time management planning. And then basically it goes into a long form listicle with all the tips, Set, setting goals, creating a to-do list, and plan your week on Sunday. And, and so you can see that it's really a holistic and in-depth piece that comes at it from every angle. They even talk about time management tools. And they're really being rewarded for this because this is the ranking chart for this, um, this uh, guide. And you can see that um, it today ranks in total for more than 1200 keywords and it has almost 400 keywords on page one. Right, and so this is phenomenal because they're really getting a lot out of that one piece. They're getting um, a lot of rankings, a lot of keywords, a lot of traffic out of that one piece. And a few things that they've been doing totally right with their long form guides, um, such as this one is they're really using an SEO fueled content marketing. So they're basically integrating search traffic competitiveness um, with topics that are really core to their business, um, which is a nice, um, nice um, overlap because sometimes SEOs tend to only go over, over after keyword search volume and then maybe pick a few terms that are not really matching the core of your business that well. And then maybe content marketing sometimes fits uh, or brand picks topics that are really at the core of your business, super valuable, but the set search traffic is not there yet. And um, Toggle really managed to integrate the two and really rank for, for high traffic terms. 
Then what they're also doing good is they're really in depth in their guides and they capture a huge variety of keywords and phrases with just that one um, 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 content piece. And the reason why they're doing that well is because they're good at keyword mapping. So all the keywords really have a specific home on their websites. And this makes Google really happy because it's a very mathematical mind. It's an algorithm, right? It's not a human, so it likes structure. And Toggle understands structure. And then the fourth benefit is that these guides are also attractive to get links um, because um, we know this, like often people don't necessarily want to link to don't, don't want to link to your sales page or landing page, et cetera. They might consider you spammy if you ask for it. But if you actually have a useful resource and you have a great guide, then um, then they link to it. And I'm just going to pop ahead into this slide for a second, which is the bonuses. With these guides, we actually get links. And so we can see here, oh, we can see here, um, these are some of the top performing blog posts that Toggle has. And this is the amount of links that they're getting. And so, for example, they have a guide on the true cost of hiring, which has 488 referring domains, not backlinks, right? So backlinks would be even higher. Um, the 10 examples of the career goals is 189 links. Um, elevator pitch examples is 141. These are all more topics related to their product plan, to their project management tool. But the point that I'm trying to make here is if you have an actually good research, an actual um, phenomenal long form guide, then this is also one that you can generate links more easily from. And for sure, they're run, running backlink campaigns to them, but they're being really successful in that way. And I just wanted to highlight that. But now back quickly to the point that I mentioned earlier, which is Toggle is good at keyword mapping. And this means that all the keywords that they wanted to target have one specific home on the website. And the way to achieve this is really by structuring your website well. And so here, my classic example is, if you have a website about food, it surely has at least two main topics. Uh, one um, is fruits and one is meats. Maybe one could be vegetable, one could be grains. And then let's say you're within the fruit part of the website. Then you could be talking about apples, bananas. And you can see that in the past, um, Toggle used to have the majority of the articles on the blog, and they still have a lot of articles on the blog. Um, but they started to structure their website better now. So a lot of that time management content now lives at toggle.com slash track. And this is where basically that's their fruit, right? This is their time management. Everything related to time management lives there. And then they have toggle.com slash plan where all their project management topics live. And so they've, they've gotten a lot stricter. Like once they started breaking out the products and there's not just toggle the time tracking tool, but now there's toggle track, toggle plan. They also started breaking out their website and they started housing content in those two silos. But the important point is, right, they have one article, time management strategies. They have one article, time management tips. They have one article, online stopwatch. And they didn't try to cover that topic over and over and over with several blog posts. They have that one specific page optimized for that one specific keyword, and they keep updating and improving it over time. And then, of course, you can always have supporting keywords, long tail questions supporting those main pages, right? So there might be um, how to use to do lists um, um, to manage your time better. It might be a supporting article that links to the time management tips article that you obviously can still write. But it's important that time management tips has that one specific home on the website and you don't keep reusing it over and over because if you keep using that topic on a variety of articles, they're going to start competing with each other. And Google is going to be confused in terms of which one to actually rank for. And so um, this is kind of the first part of what I wanted to talk about with Toggle is, is that they're really good at creating those guides. They're really good at understanding what the keywords need and making it happen. And so um, that's something to learn at. If you have the tendency to use um, the same keyword over and over and over again, um, then um, this, this is your opportunity to rethink that and starting to get very um, starting to get very specific. And if you do have several articles that are all going after the same keyword, this might be a good timing to think about where can you consolidate this? Where can you make sure um, that two articles that are covering the same keyword are consolidated into one? Where is a keyword that you never gave a full article, but it's maybe worthwhile having a full um, 
article. Um, so um, Toggle has a lot to learn from that and really use their blog as an opportunity to study those principles. Um, all right, and with that, we jump back into, into the slide deck. Um, here we go. Get links, I talked about that. The next thing that Toggle does really, really well is they're really good at meeting search intent. And so search intent is one of those things that can seem a little bit nebulous. And we've been talking a lot about search intent in the last two or three years. But what do we really mean by search intent? So people, we've trained ourselves to kind of become a little bit robotic, right? We want to search something on Google. And we understand that we need to type things in a certain way in order for Google to understand us. So, so even though we would never speak like this, we type time management tips into Google. But what we really want is we're, we're trying to figure out how can we be more efficient? How can we save time? How can we have more time? How do we get stuff done faster? And this is the intent behind why we're searching. So the intent is the why, and the keyword is what we type into Google. And so meeting search intent is important because that is what Google is trying to do. Google is trying to be the best um, search algorithm on the internet, and they can only maintain that status when they give people actually what they want. So it is in your interest to meet search intent because it's in Google's interest to give the best answer to a search query. And once they deem that you are the best answer to a search query, they will um, show you more often. Um, so um, this is an, an example for meeting search intent beautifully. So Toggle is ranking for the keyword time tracking Mac. And so what we as SEOs have tended to do for a long, long time is that no matter the search query, we just wrote an article. So a typical SEO game is you write an article um, what is time tracking for Mac, um, why it is important, best practices for time tracking for Mac. But you know, the thing is, someone who types this into Google, they're not looking to learn about why time tracking on Mac is important. They're looking for a time tracker on Mac. They actually want to get started, and they want to start tracking. And so Toggle has done a beautiful thing here because they actually allow you to download a free app to track time on your Mac and on your Windows as well, by the way. They have the same app also for Windows. And so this is two things. Firstly, it generates qualified leads um, for Toggle because it is a Toggle track is a time tracking tool and it's it's part of their components. So they're they're they're, they're getting interesting leads through the door. They're getting people that are using the product through the door. And then beautifully, they, they didn't even have to write a long form guide for this. This is more a landing slash sales page for their free app. And, and they're still winning rankings and they're still winning top positions with those pages. And that is because this page is giving people really what they wanted, which is the free time tracking for Windows and Mac. Um, also, an uh, obvious example is, um, is the online time tracker. If you're looking for an online time tracker, uh, you actually want to track time. You don't want to read an article about why time tracking matters. And so when people type online timer, then Toggle actually has an online timer. Again, it's a page with not a whole lot of text on it. Uh, we can see it here. We have the online timer, right? Then there's a little bit um, of a call to action to Toggle. And then they basically um, use that as a hub to link to their other blog posts. And that's about it. So there's not a whole lot of word count here. But at the core of it, again, this is also linkable, is the online timer. And you can see here are some rankings that, for example, free online stopwatch, they're in position seven, full, full screen stopwatch, they're in position three. They used to be um, for online timer in the top three. And I think they recently read it the site. I read it the page and it, it, it might have lost some rankings, but you can see it's already online stopwatch free position six. It's coming back up. And again, this is a good example for giving people actually what they want and actually meeting search intent. Now you might you might say that, oh, but I can't create an app for every keyword that I want to be ranking for. I can't create a timer for every keyword that I want to be ranking for. But I still want to bring the point home, which is that there's two advantages to this strategy. Like one is you're giving people what they want, and sometimes that simply is not text. And so, in terms of of satisfying people' need, building loyalty to your brand, um, it's a much stronger strategy. And then, secondly, your product features or spin-off of product features they meet search intent and they generate qualified leads. And if that 
it's not enough of an argument for you to kind of at least consider this strategy, then I want to quote Kane Jameson from Content Harmony um, because he says, what we do as SEOs, we often guess search intent labels manually based on the query itself, not the actual search results, which means that we have 200 keywords in our keyword research, but we never actually look on page one. We just assume that we know what is needed. We just see um, online timer and we assume people want to guide comparing the different options, but we haven't actually looked on page one to see that people actually want to start tracking. And so the name of the game is to understand the type of content that Google is looking to serve to the users based on what Google knows about the user's intent. And so understanding user intent and understanding what Google thinks that people want is really, is really working on your favor. And don't be too worried if you think like I, I can't make an app, I can't make a time tracking tool, you know, I don't have the dev resources, or this is not on our roadmap that is distracting. There's a lot of things that your content marketing team can do too. And one of those examples is, for example, here is like Toggle has an area where they have timesheet templates. And so again, these are people that don't know yet that an app or software would be the right thing for them, but they have a pain point. They know that they need to manage and track their time better. And so if you type Google Sheets um, time tracking template, this is the page that comes up. And then you can see here daily timesheet and it says um, get the timesheet. And then it just takes you to a time tracking timesheet. And this is easy, easy to make, right? So if you're thinking about dev re resources, et cetera, this is a very easy thing to do. And you're still giving people what they want and, and um, satisfying search intent. Another example is if you go to toggle slash check slash invoice template PDF, you actually get an invoice template PDF once you click on the button. So these are a lot of things that your content marketing team can create and uh, generate, and you don't need dev resources to do so. I'll show a couple of like more sophisticated um, examples in a second, but that's something to think about. And then this is my favorite one in the software space, which is Toggle is ranking or trying to rank for the keyword um, project um, tracking software. And there we go. So Google knows that people who are looking for this are in a stage of commercial investigation. They're comparing different solutions and they want to see a listicle. And we know this is because when you type these type of queries into Google, you see G2, you see Captera, you see Trustpilot, you see listicles, you see affiliate sites comparing tools. And so a lot of software tools shy away from this. But um, what Toggle did is they did the 10 best project, track, project tracking um, software. And you can see it it's again, what is the project tracking software? What features should you be looking for? And then the 10 best tools. And they start with their tool plan, but they actually talk about their competitors. They talk about Asana, they talk about Monday. And this is because Google wants to see it. Google wants you to use those terms and what, um, and, and competitors. And so in terms of getting search intent right and doing what Google wants to do, they're actually doing a perfect job with this guide. And because this is always a challenging one, because um, then maybe your sales team is like, oh, we never mentioned competitors in the sales call um, because we don't want them to make think of the competitors. And um, there's always some internal debate around this. So my first question would be, have you ever done a strategy like this? Have you ever, um, put a guide where you compared yourself to your competitors as an SEO play and how did it go? And then secondly, I'm curious to understand, uh, or I, secondly, I would like to note is that most people do the market research anyway. Most people will know your main competitors anyway, um, just because um, if you're making a decision for your business, you usually look at a few options. And so they're usually aware of it. And the way to not make this like super cheesy and um, kind of push yourself too much is, is by highlighting the features that you are significantly better than others or the features that you have that your competitors don't have. And that's a, usually the way to write one of those guides um, without being too tacky. Um, So um, I, one of the questions I see here in the chat is, um, is uh, what do we do if we're not toggle, but we want to rank for online time trackers? 
um, and want to rank the top 10 online time trackers. Actually, uh, this is interesting because there's a difference in search intent between online time tracker, where toggle ranks with the, with the stopwatch that I just showed you. But for the top online uh, time track cares, so plural and kind of like best and top in it, they also have a guide comparing different options. And so again, it comes back to page one. If you see several comparison listicle articles on page one, you can definitely also try a comparison of listicle article. If page one is full of actual stopwatches and timers, and then probably your listicle is going to have a hard time. And then also now Google is starting to show their own stopwatch at the top, which is probably what 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 is giving um, Toggle with that play um, some issues right now. But yeah, I'm I'm curious to see if if any of any of you have kind of like worked with that strategy of creating a comparison guide on your own website with all your competitor in it before. So feel free to pop a, a question in the comments about uh, a comment about that. Um, in the comments, so so I can know how familiar with you with this, and if not, we can always talk about that via email later as well. So this is what I wanted to tell you about meeting search intent. Don't think that you have to create an app, but if you use a keyword like invoice template, make sure that there's some template. If you use a, a tool like da 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 Google Sheets template, then make sure there's a Google Sheets template um, because um, that just makes it that. You, again, your site has a better chance of collecting links and it has a better chance of meeting search intent and being successful. 2000 words guide is usually a good answer for top of the funnel, educational, informational, we're trying to get on top of it terms. But then once we get kind of like towards middle and bottom of funnel, I, middle and bottom of funnel, I really encourage you to look on page one, see what's there and create something that meets search intent. So here we go, jumping back into the screen share. Yeah, so search intent bonus. If you do have some dev resources and if you do want to work on this, there are some companies that have actually done beautiful product spinoffs um, based on that concept. There is um, CoSchedule, which is a social media um, um, scheduling tool. They have a free headline analyzer, so you can type your social media posts or blog headlines in there, and they give you a score based on how catchy it is, which I think is great. Ahrefs themselves, they have a free backlink checker, which ranks for free backlink checker and actually lets you check your backlinks for free. And then Canva, who is phenomenal at this, um, when they rank for resume templates, um, again, they don't have an article about what does it take to make a good uh, resume, they actually have a library of resume templates and you can start, start using them and playing with them. And that those are three beautiful examples of, of using a product spin-off to meet search intent and generate product qualified leads as well. Now, we talked a lot about kind of like informational, top of funnel, middle of funnel keyword, but now what's with the transactional keywords? Where do those live? How do I win them, especially in a competitive space? So firstly, it's usually a good idea to optimize your main page. In a case of Toggle, the main page for the time tracking software is toggle.com slash track. And you can see it ranks for time tracking. Um, it ranks for time tracker, time tracking app, time tracking tool. And so you definitely want to rank. And I think that's part of the reason why they started using the silo structure. If you remember the fruits and meat, they started housing all the time tracking content under toggle.com slash track to basically improve the this specific page and link to that page and strengthen it because you can see the keyword difficulty for those terms is extremely high. So being in the 70s, 80s, 90s is extremely high. And so I just see, let me have a quick look. We have a question here. Oh, I might need to refresh if I want to see the question on LinkedIn. Let me pop into here. Do, do, do. Ah. What about passing web core vitals? Did this impact Toggle's position in the SERP? Um, that, that's a good question. I did not look into this um, specifically um, when I did this research. So for all of you who haven't heard about the web core vitals, it's basically Google's attempt of making PageSpeed a more important ranking factor. And they were meant to roll it out in spring of this year, um, but then they pushed it back and it just got rolled out now. 
But the reason why I think they probably didn't have like a massive uh, um, a drop is, is because when you look at their overall ranking charts, it has been quite stable. It has been improving. There's a little dip in the last month. Maybe that's due to the web core vitals. But I have to say for this research, I didn't specifically look at this. Um, but yeah, um, user experience and page speed are becoming increasingly important. I still think it has a lot to do also with the internet connection on which people are on. But one thing that we know from the UX people is if your page takes more than three seconds to load, you're losing like a huge percentage of, of visitors. And so whether or not you know it's a super important ranking factor or not, if you think about your conversion, your brand, and things that you want to be doing, there's no way around a fast site. Um, period. Okay, so transaction keyword optimize your main pages for the keyword. And then one thing you have to be aware of, though, for transactional terms is you really got to account for the landscape on page one, because the times are gone when uh, 10 blue links were uh, the thing on page one, and, and, and this is what you got. Um, now, especially for transactional keywords with, with high purchasing intent, we always have um, ads on the top, right? So we can see um, for, for the um, time track, uh, time tracking, time tracker keyword, we have two um, Google, uh, three Google ads on the top. Then we have the competitor Glockif Clockify. Then we have people also ask box. And then we have toggle. So people have to do quite a bit of scrolling, even though toggle is in position three, people have to do quite a bit of scrolling past three ads, past the competitor and past people also ask to find this track page. Um, so what does this mean is um, toggle is obviously bidding on that keyword as well. And this is important just to take up real estate on page one and take us as much real estate on page one as you possibly could. And so that's something to consider if you have the budget and you can prove the return on investment on those ads, even though you're ranking well, you probably want to have um, an ad on the top as well. And then the other thing that you see a lot now is the people also ask. And the first question for people also ask is how can I track my working time? And right now it's getting an answer by Zapier. And so luckily Zapier mentions Toggle as the first best time tracking app. So there's some presence for Toggle here. But obviously, they could try and kind of like make it into people also um, ask box as well. And then, for example, Cl Clockify, they got lucky because for the question, is there an app to track my work hours? They It's their page that ranks, and they obviously name themselves first. So ranking um, position uh, two, three, four, a time tracking app, that, that might not be all it takes. You might need to look on page one, see if there are ads, see if there are people ask and then optimize for those as well. And this might, might be partnership with others, so making sure that you're mentioned in their articles or trying to rank for the people ask as well. Search results usually look a little bit more quote unquote normal. And when I say normal, I mean like 10 years ago, 10 blue links, um, when you go more long tail. And Toggle has done really well winning all kinds of keywords for different niches and sub industries. And so, um, for example, they, they rank for the free time tracking software, but they also, which, I mean, this is always a slippery slope, right? They have a few different free apps and they have the free plan, but ultimately they want people to pay. But what's more interesting is probably the stuff like the agency project management software, timeline software, um, construction scheduling software, and Gantt chart software, best planning software, simple project management software. You can see that they've created different pages for all those long tail keywords um, and they created super targeted blog posts for them. So even though some of the search volume here is in the 60s, 70s, 100, 250, so this is never gonna let their organic traffic explode, but it makes it that for those niche, super specific people that are looking to solve that one specific problem and that have a very high buying intent, that they are, you see in a lot of page one rankings um, and then a bunch of, um, position one rankings and a bunch of page one rankings. And it just means that, that for those specific people, they give them exactly what they want. And that's usually a good that way um, to go about it because if you realize that your main keyword is in the 70s, 80s, 90s when it comes to keyword difficulty, that's a long, hard game to play. And it can take a long, long time for you to rank for that. And as you build out the supporting content, um, your long form guides, your entire silo to support eventually hitting that one ranking goal, 
please think about the long tail and targeted versions as well. And usually it's good to use the main term for your software and then use your different target audiences, right? So time tracking for accountants, um, um, for construction, for agencies, et cetera, use the different target audiences. You can use different um, industries, right? Time tracking for retail, time tracking for hospitality. Um, and then you can use different use cases also, right? It's like time tracking um, to build clients or time tracking for freelancers um, is, is a very different thing, time tracking for lawyers. So please, um, please don't disregard them. And you can see that Toggle has a lot of them here, right? Um, so software development planning tools, um, uh, Windows time tracking software, we talked about that, software project management tool, time blocking software, consultant time tracking um, software. Um, so there, there, there's really a lot there and there's a lot of different, um, different options there. And if you add up all these search traffic, um, there, there is something there, right? And the return on investment is there if you can actually generate leads from it, which also means that you really need to pay attention to either your inline call to actions. So here, for example, um, people say like, oh, but the inline call to action doesn't pop out. But who sees that call to action? It's the person actually reading your article, right? And so they're the one that you want to see the article. And then make sure to have a few big and bold ones for the people who are kind of like scanning or looking to sign up make it easy for them to do so. So yeah, this is this is kind of like the summary on transactional keywords is, um, if the main transactional keyword that you're going after is so hot and so competitive and there's so many big players in there, start with the long tail variations because that's a little bit more of a regular SEO game. You can also see that all of these articles are living um, predominantly on the toggle blog. And so these are pages that are quite easy to put up. They don't need a lot of design work. Um, and then make sure that the article actually is targeted at the people that you're writing for. And with time, as you build out your domain authorities, your silos, as you get more links to the guides and you internally link to your main page, then you can start winning those head tails as well. All right, just having a quick look again, see how people are doing. Um, perfect. Um, I am not sure, like Facebook has a second post about this, so I'm not sure if it has a comment on there. Let me quickly refresh and see see if anything is happening on the, on the Facebook post. No, all right, got it. Um, always interesting to kind of like learn and see because um, I put the Facebook up yesterday and then I see it generates a new Facebook post once you actually go live. All right, so back, back into the slide deck. So yeah, make sure you have call to actions, right? The goal, the goal of um, I'm creating all these pages is ultimately generating leads. Um, so that's for transaction and keywords. Then I wanted to show you something fun. I looked at what is the what are the pages for Toggle that have the most social shares. And so obviously their homepage is actually being shared quite a bit, which I think that's good. And some of their jobs are being shared quite a bit. And then I saw this, I saw a startup, Unicorn Startup Simulator is one of the most um, on Twitter shared pieces with 2,200 um, shares. And when you go to it, it's actually a game a very retro looking game that allows you to build a startup. And this is just your, or my reminder to you to have some fun with this. There is, you know, uh, SEO is so mathematical. It's so strict. I'm always telling you, you gotta be structured, you gotta be structured. But I think Toggle is really striking the balance. They have their long form guides. They have the optimized well for transactional pages. They manage to get links to their guides. And then sometimes they just do something that is fun and playful and that gets attention, that gets links and that gets social shares. So yeah, make sure um, to, to check out their, their little startup game and make sure that when you think about the things that you could be doing that you don't forget to have some fun. And with that, I'll quickly talk about your next steps and things that you could take from this presentation. One, and I hope this became very clear is that not all content is created equal. 
when we think about SEO, we often think about long form text guides. And I just want you to be aware that text is not always the answer and text test is not always the winning strategy. And the winning strategy really depends on what your goals are. And based on what we can learn from them, there's at least five different goals that we can have when we generate content. The first goal could be we want to win educational or informational top and middle of funnel keywords by writing long form guides. Those guides cover a topic in depth. They can rank for hundreds of keywords and they can drive a lot of traffic to your website. And so if you if your team and your investors, if you if you want to see your organic traffic charts go up, that's a great strategy. They are also a great resource to collect links. And this means that, that for example, like the Ahrefs free backlink checker, the free um, headline analyzer by his code schedule, or, um, you know, for example, the, the best icebreaker question guides from Toggle, they, they rank for their keywords, but they also collect a lot of links. And that means that your general domain authority is increasing. And that also means that you finally have link juice, and then you can internally link to your main pages, to your sales pages, and they can start ranking for those competitive terms. So think about when you're creating guides, where's that element of meeting search intent, being playful, being interesting, offering a template, offering a product spin-off that makes people actually want to link to you and actually want to share your thing and actually and want to include you into listicles. So this kind of goes hand in hand with meet search intent by being the best answer to the search query. And sometimes that might mean development work. Sometimes that might mean your content marketing team is creating some templates. And then fourth, your goal could be to win transactional keywords to drive brand awareness and leads. And this is when it's more obvious, right? Because the, the, the path from time tracking tips to a paying customer might still be far. But from someone who is looking for time tracking for consultants or lawyers or agency, they're, they're, they're very warm at this point. They're, they're ready. They, they want to solve a problem within their team, especially if they're a service-based business. There's always a pain point about how do you invoice clients? How do you track time? How do you communicate that? And so winning those long tail variations of transaction keywords actually allows you to generate um, good leads. So don't get too hung up on that one head tail if it's too competitive, because there might be um, thousands of, of variations that still are relevant for your brand and for your lead gen. And then fifth, um, get social shares in play. I really love the game that they did. Um, Basecamp did something funny la last year where they did the, the dumpster fire where you can send an email and they would literally send it on fire for you. So um, that's just one, that's not an SEO game per se, but I just wanted us to be aware that again, not all good content is text content and there's a few other things that you might wanna be doing. And to kind of cluster it, when we think about classic SEO work, I think these two, winning informational keywords with long form guides and winning transactional keywords, that's kind of your classic SEO work. So your next step here would be jumping into a tool um, and doing a proper keyword research, looking at all your competitors, what do they rank for, where are the opportunities, and then creating those guides or blog posts um, or landing pages for them. This is kind of, let's say, the classic SEO game. You find the keywords, you create the page, then, um, and then and, um, this, th these are the two steps. But then these two, these two already mean make it good, right? So you have your topic for the guide, you have your topic for the tra transactional keyword, and now you actually want to make it good. You want to have a product spin-off, a template, something that really needs search intent and something that allows you to collect links. And I think this is where the good SEO game is at, when you can transcend the two yellow steps into this two request step and make this actually a great piece of content. And, um, and then, like I said, the third option is kind of like get social shares and play because why not? Um, and because content marketing is fun, right? And we want to be playful with that. And so, just looking back, yes, Toggle is a company that is quite old, but in terms of like really ramping up their SEO game, they really started in 2017. And you can see they have a lot of growth in 2018 and 2019. And they now rank for like 180,000 keywords. And even more importantly, this innocent looking line here on the bottom in dark orange, these are their top one rankings. And so you can see here in dark, dark orange, there's 7,700 keywords that they're in the top three, four, 
and there is more than 11,000 keywords that they're on page one for. And so this also means that when we estimate their traffic, if you think about a Ahrefs said 300,000 visitors, some are said four to 600, this might be off by at least like double. It might be that they have at least twice as much traffic. I've seen um, the traffic estimates be quite wrong. And so the fact that they probably have between three and 600,000 visitors is the absolute most conservative that you could probably be. They probably have more traffic than that. And so this is a, a game that they really started pushing um, the last um, four years. And I think it can be you. And so I'm going to leave it with the usual kind of let's talk slide. If you have questions, I'll I'll stick around a couple of minutes to kind of like monitor the comments, see if something comes up. But generally speaking, you can always reach me at viola at flowseo.com. We mainly do SEO strategies for digital businesses, which means we work with software companies, e-commerce and e-learning, and we help them create strategies like this. We do SEO driven content marketing. We help you. Um, figure out what are the guides that you should be creating, what are the blog posts that should be you should be creating, what are the landing pages you should be creating. And we have an awesome backlink team that helps you promote these pages so that they actually get some beautiful link juice. And if you're interested in any of that, please email me at viola at flowseo.com. And with this, um, I am going to leave it, yeah, I'm kind of like open to see if anyone else wants to pop in. Otherwise, uh, my understanding with the live streams is that this video is going to keep living on Facebook and on LinkedIn. If you have signed up for the event, I will also um, send it out um, by email after. If you didn't have a chance to catch it or you're not on LinkedIn so much, then I I'll make sure that you'll find it after. And otherwise, I really appreciate you tuning in today. I kind of wanted to see what it's like to run this through the LinkedIn um, platform. So if you have any feedback on on having this live on LinkedIn versus having it on Zoom, please let me know if you have any questions about the content, things that you want to see more of, a company that you would like me to decode and look at, then please pop it in the comments as well. And then otherwise, I really appreciate you taking the time for this webinar today. Thank you so, so much. And, and make sure to shoot me an email if anything comes up. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the slide deck, yeah, I can put the, I'll, I'm just um, looking into the comments. Slide deck, yeah, I have that, as you've seen in, in the, uh, it's, a, it's a Google slide deck. I'll download the PDF and, uh, and put it up in the comments so you can have a look at it and kind of go over the data again, absolutely. That is not a problem. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for saying here, yep. Oh, we have one more question. Strategy to better understand search intent. Ah, well, so okay, we have one more question. What's the best strategy to better understand search intent? Uh, Georgie, great question. Love it. Um, look on page one. <laughs> That's the most important answer. And then try to reverse engineer what is Google thinking. So again, if you look on page one and you see it's full of listicles, G2, Captera, you can kind of like see that Google thinks this is a commercial investigation and people are trying to compare options. If you look on page one and there's a lot of home pages, uh, feature pages, sales pages, this means that Google is kind of like ready for a very kind of like transactional salesy page. And you can probably try to rank a sales page or a landing page as well. If you look on page one and everyone has a 2000 word guide, then you're probably not gonna make it with a sales or landing page. You will probably need um, to create a guide as well. And then also within guides, have a look at what are the topics being covered, right? So for example, time management, usually you will have something like, what is time management, time management, best practices, time management challenges. And an easy way to reverse engineer that is using an on-page SEO tool. So um, Andy has been here earlier. He has a beautiful tool called Page Optimizer Pro. And so you basically just pop a keyword into the tool and then it gives you data on the average word count on page one. It gives you data on the topics and keywords that, um, that that top ranking results are using. And it will give you a really good understanding of what you need to cover in order to win that keyword. Because the other mistake that I see software companies make is that they, they do time management, 
but then they actually create more like a tutorial slash help desk article for their own software tool, how to do time management with their tool. But that's not what Google wants to see there, right? And then those articles tend to not rank that well, even though that's right thinking. It's like, ah, oh, I'm going to write a product led piece. But it's not what Google would like to see. So you understand search intent best by actually looking on page one. And if you do this a lot and you don't want to do it manually, like I said, Annie and Kyle have a beautiful tool called Page Optimizer Pro. There's also other ones. But these tools really help you hone in to see what Google would like to see. Um, perfect. So we see that. Thank you, everyone who joined today. Um, we have that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a nice afternoon, everyone. See you soon.